coming more towards me. There you go, and then just straighten your elbow so the skin goes together. Nice and uncomfortable, it's perfect. Typical trauma is like a car crash. That's our most common trauma, usually. What we call blunt trauma. <laughs> that would be the most typical. But we get motorcycle crashes, and less commonly we get penetrating trauma, which would include like a stab wound or a shooting. A regular ER takes patients that are having, you know, like heart attacks or they're having a stroke or they're ill for whatever reason, but a trauma patient is someone who's potentially seriously injured, um, either from, like I said, penetrating or blunt trauma, and they, they may need kind of surgical intervention. So that would make them a trauma patient. It's either either whether they have obvious injuries or um, possible injuries. You never know until they're evaluated. So. A lot of patients that come through the ER don't need necessarily trauma or any surgical care, but they have you know, maybe a high fever or uh, flu or bowel obstruction or something like that. A regular emergency room doesn't have um, a surgeon who's there on at the ready, actually in the department waiting in case a trauma arrives. Uh, also, there's a neurosurgeon available. And then other ancillary support like interventional radiology and, and a, a full complement of specialists, other surgeons, plastic surgeon, uh, ENT surgeon, uh, that would be available if we needed them. Potentially if they needed those other either surgeons or other su support or other interventions done, they'd have to be transferred. So it saves a lot of, I think, time and uh, energy and money if they can just if they're at the, the trauma center where all those things are available.